Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Rumors and news edition. And we're going to do what we've been doing now for a while. The fabulous trade everybody edition. No, like looking at trade rumors and what's going to happen. And you say, oh, the deadline's over, Pearl. Yes, but the off season isn't. And that's going to happen. And we're going to be looking at moves that teams might be making in the off season. Especially teams that may not make the playoffs, but not limited to. We just did Mr. John Gibson yesterday. Oh, and all the flood of yesterday, a couple days ago, last week. I do about one of these a week. So sub yourself up because you're going to want to be part of the frolic. I got, I'll be doing playoff predictions. Don't worry about it. I know you're all excited. I'm going to be doing playoff predictions for sure. And there's going to be a lot of playoff talk. But I love, love, love talking trades and what teams are going to do and what they're planning for the future and all that. It makes, makes me all happy on my insides. Um, so we did John Gibson. We did uh, Lafreniere. We traded Lafreniere. Go look at that video and see why Lafreniere might be traded. That's very interesting. Um, in the Before the trade deadline, we did a whole bunch of stuff. We had Lindholm going to Boston, and he went there. We had uh, Sherratt end up going to Florida. We had him going to St. Louis or Florida, and he ended up going to Florida. So you, we're fairly accurate in our predictions of where they may go, what the return will be. Actually, I said Sherratt would get a first and a prospect. Now, I did not realize that Anaheim was going to get what they got for Lindholm. Woo! That was amazing. Okay, so today, though, we're going to be talking about Mr. Shifley. Yes, you heard correctly. The Winnipeg Jets, according to Elliot Friedman and several other insiders, there's all the scuttlebucket spot in the land. Scuttlebutt. God, what the heck was that? Scuttlebutt. I almost said, like, it's like a clutterbuck scuttlebutt combination. I don't know. Anyways, it's all out there in the land that Shifley may be on his way to Winnipeg's making some moves in the summer. Makes some sense, actually. Uh, they've been going on for a while, getting knocked out of the first or second round every year. With this group that they have right now, uh, it's very possible. But we'll look at that. We're going to look at Shifley's contract. We're going to look at what Winnipeg may be looking for in return. And five teams that probably will be ringing up the phones and seem the most likely for Shifley's landing spot if that were to happen. All right. Let's take a look. So, uh, so I can show you that I'm not just talking out of my butt here, boys and girls. Although, I do that from time to time, but not right now. Not right now. Okay. Here we go. This is the article in question. Jets could undergo a massive change. Darren Drager noted during an interview with Toronto with on Toronto 1050 that he is necessarily necessarily sure of changes might be coming, but they could be significant. I think they missed a word there. He's not necessarily sure, but they could be significant. Drager said that it could be anything from a small coaching change for, or bigger roster moves. The more significant deal is that they hit the core of the roster. Drager thinks that the Jets really want to keep Pierre-Luc Dubois, who they're going to have to up, pay. And Blake Wheeler's contract is tough to move. Yes, very tough to move. $8 million for a 35-year-old player. It is very good, but it's still 35. And it's going to be difficult to move that contract. This means that Shifley could be a guy who goes out, and Drager said there's enough swirling around out there that there might be an appetite for change. The rest of the panel on the show was in agreement. Jamie McLennan, one of the fine Sportsnet people and goaltender for the Florida Panthers for a lot of years, I believe the New York Islanders as well, 
suggested that even the Jets, even if the Jets get in and close to the first round, it makes sense to change the dynamic of what this team looks like. Dreger said whether they miss the playoffs or make the playoffs, he doesn't think the team will look same next season. And yes, it does. I heard this before. This isn't the first time that Shifley's name has been bandied about out there. So let's look at Shifley. Let's look at Winnipeg. Um, and also notice here that it says that there is an appetite for change. Is that just an appetite for Winnipeg? Or maybe Shifley might be thinking, you know what? Things I've been here for a while and maybe I might want to apply my skills out to where myself. It's quite possible. All right. So let's look at Mr. Mark Shifley here. He's from Kitchener, Ontario, Canada. Uh, he's 29. He is on, he's got three more years left at a very, very sensible $6.1 million, which would make his value very, very impressive. It would. Like, it's, he should get a very good return. He's got a modified no trade clause, submits 10 teams he cannot be traded to. Now, for the sake of this, <clears throat> for this sake, I have five teams. I do not know if it's on his 10 team no trade list. There's several in here I think that would not be, but they could be. I'm not sure. However, we're just going to be looking at what is viable at the time. A good spot. What would be teams that would be could find a spot for him and maybe have the cap space or could work the cap space to have him in. Now, why would a team want a Mr. Shifley, you ask? All right. Well, he's pretty much a pointed game player for the last, what, one? Over, or over pointed game for the last one, two, three, four, five, six years. Six years as a point of game center playing pretty solid defense. 572 points in 639 games. And, uh, you know, 31 playoff points in 33 games. And as you can tell, he hasn't played a lot of playoff games. He had the one year in 2017-18 where they went on a pretty good run. But besides that, it's been a struggle. So he may be thinking himself, you know what? Maybe a new change of scenery might help me out as well. But that is a solid package for $6 million. A point-a-game center. If he was going to go on the free agent market right now, he'd be looking at 9 to $9.5 million probably. Somebody would probably pony up that kind of money for him. And he's only making 6 for the next... Wait a sec. Let me go back here. I thought he had a couple years left on his contract. He's not a free agent this year. No. No, 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 no. I know that's not the truth. Those are lies. You're telling lies. Let's make sure I got this right. Shifley. Yes. 2003-24. There you go. The other one was incorrect. So, two more years after this year at $6 million is a pretty solid, solid first. Number one center, who is 6'3", by the way. He's a big, big boy. The guy is 6'3", over 200 pounds. Yeah, there's going to be interest in a Mr. Shifley. What will Winnipeg be looking for? Okay, well, the good thing about here is that Winnipeg doesn't really need to get a center back, and that can be huge. You can get a really good winger for a center. So, because Wheeler can play center, and he's not going anywhere. At $8.2 million for the next couple of years, although, you know, he's still putting up close to a point a game. He has had some injury issues. But the fact of the matter is he can play center. I think at this stage he would be better at wing. So if they could get a center back, it would probably be better. But not completely necessary. Also, 
they have they have some pretty good young players coming up as well. Um, where the heck did they put Perlini? Where's Perlini? They have Perlini. I can't find him here at the second. In the second, where is he? Miners. Oh, Perfetti. I mean Perlini. Perfetti. Cole Perfetti. He's injured. Okay, there we go. Injured reserve. But week to week, he was looking pretty solid. They're probably looking at making some room for him, anyways. So, and he can play center or wing. So that's the good news is that Perfetti, I don't know why I said Perlini, Perfetti is ready to go here soon. It all kind of makes sense to maybe, maybe Pierre-Luc Dubois. Uh, or sorry, maybe Shifley could do it. Pierre-Luc Dubois is going to need a contract this year. He's at $5 million. He's probably going to be making right, maybe even more than Shifley in this next contract. I do like Shifley better, but... He, but Dubois is a lot younger, and he wanted to come to Winnipeg. His father is in the organization and all of those things, and if they're looking to make a change, they're probably going to get the best return for Mr. Mark Shifley. Okay, so what teams may be interested? A lot. I think all the teams will be calling, but I think these are the five teams that would have a best chance of picking up Mr. Shifley. First, the Carolina Hurricane. Now, why the Carolina Hurricane? For me, first of all, Shifley is a kind of player that they don't really have. A big power center who can play all the kinds of ways in the land that you would like. And he's got some pretty good veteran leadership to go with Jordan Stahl there, who's on the decline right now. I think he would play fantastic with Svechnikov and Nietzsche, assuming Nietzsche isn't part of this deal. Um, Seth Jarvis, of course, is there uh, coming up for the right wing. So, and he's going to be a number one. So he's going to be on, on the number one. He's been fantastic on the right-hand side for, for Carolina. And Vinny Trocek, from all, it just seems like all the things I've heard, they're very lukewarm with Vinny Trocek as to what he's asking for. And it seems like he may just be on his way out. Now, Shifley is making $6 million. Vinny Trocek is, is a good player, okay? But he's no Mark Shifley, I'll tell you that right now. And apparently he's asking for somewhere around $7, 7 $7.5 million a year. So you let him walk. You can make him part of this deal, but I really don't know why Winnipeg would want to get take an unrestricted free agent like Vinny Trocek unless they were going to give him an eight-year deal. I don't know if you know it, but you can only offer a player an eight-year deal if he owns his rights. So maybe they think that Vinny Trocek will be okay till he's 36 and they give him $7.5 million, and that's their center to play with Wheeler on the right-hand side over there. It's it's possible, but it's not. Even if they did do that, they're not giving up anything because Vinny Trocek, honestly, they could just wait and sign him at free agency, and he probably would be happy with the $7 million deal anyways. It is a little bit of value because you get the opportunity to give him the eight-year deal so no one else would be able to give him an eight-year deal in which case you would secure the ability to get him. I just don't think Vinny Trocek's getting an eight-year deal from anybody out there. So there's no reason to really do that. So if he was part of the deal, it would just be basically so they could sign a contract with him early, and it wouldn't really bring much value to this trade. But if they're not going to sign him, you put Shifley in the middle here. Now what's next? Carolina has all the cap space in the land. Now, they have a internal cap space as well. But because they're letting Vinny Trocek go and they're taking Shifley, it shouldn't affect their cap at all. So they're okay that way. Now, because of that, Winnipeg, who is capped out, and I wanted to show that as well. We'll look at that right now just real quick. 
Winnipeg is capped out. They have lots of people to sign, like I already mentioned, one of those being Dubois, possibly Paul Stastny if they can find the room. Uh, Zachary Sanford, if they can find the room. Now, if they don't have to take anything back in this deal, money-wise, then Carolina is going to have, won't have to pony up as much because they can sign some players. So let's say they just take Vinny Trocek just to, just to talk to him to see what kind of contract he wants. See, if, if they take a player, then you can talk to the player before the free agent deadline. Gives them a bit of a value for that. Now we'll go to prospects. Carolina is going to take the whole contract without giving a player back in return that can play right now. So Winnipeg can sign some of the players they have, in which case they don't so much need the player in return. What prospects would they be willing to give for this? You're still getting a number one center on a sweet-ass deal. You're going to have to give some solid prospects back in return. And I think it's going to have to start maybe with Jack Drury. Um, possibly with another great defenseman that they have there in Alexander Nikishin. Who's doing six foot three, one ninety six, doing really good in the KHL right now? Was a borderline second, third round pick in two thousand twenty, but has progressed a lot. And either a second round bat pick in two thousand twenty three, or a Noel Gunler, something like that. It's going to take a package of picks but they wouldn't have to get rid of any players off their roster. Okay? And look at what they have. Tara Vine and Aho Jarvis. Aho and, and Shifley might be the best two-way, two-o, two, two-way center duo in the league. And you get him to play with Svechnikov and Nietzsche. Plus you've got Kokaniemi who's injured right now to to go up the third, you can drop Jordan over to the second line if they don't sign, or left wing if they don't sign Niederreiter, and I'm hearing that they may not. Maybe sign Max Domi for less, and this lineup is looking absolutely spectacular. You didn't lose anybody off the roster. Might even throw Ethan Bear in there. He's, you know, sort of fit in. Um... I do think Winnipeg would like some young defensemen, though. And I think that Nickishin kid would be right up there in their alley. Jack Drury just seems like the type of guy that they would like. Um, he's from the United States. I'm not sure how much he would be interested in Winnipeg. But in Winnipeg, he would get a chance to play pretty much right away. Put up, He had two goals in his two games. He was up in the minors. Um, great two-way guy. He just... Feels like the type of guy that Winnipeg likes. 45 points in 56 games in the AHL. I don't mind this deal, and especially with Nikitin. I just really like Nikitin a lot. They're getting two top prospects and a second in 2023 and possibly Bear to play down their, play down in their lineup as well. I think a package like that's going to be going to be what it takes. Me, tell me what you think, Carolina fans. Tell me what you think, Winnipeg fans. Is that enough? Not enough? What do you? What do you think? I think it's close to enough right there. All right, next, Colorado Avalanche. This would be just insane. Now, you th I think the first thing people are going to tell me, oh, by the way, if you're a Carolina fan, Colorado fan, sub yourself up. I do this type of content. All the time. Trade stuff. I'm going to be doing playoff predictions. All of the frolic in the land here. We do trades like crazy all the time. Go check out my other videos. It's fun. Um, uh, this deal is weird because it's happening only if they don't want to pay Nazem Kadri the money that he could be asking for here. 
it's good. That's going to be a very interesting contract that they're looking at here in uh, for the Abs because Nazem Kadri has not ever has never had a year as good as he had this year. Not even close. He had thirty two points last year, thirty six and fifty one. His best year before this was his what third year in the league, sixty one points and eighty two games. For Toronto, and then on a contract year, he goes off and gets 83 and 65. A little bit fishy to me, but the fact of the matter is, if he goes out on the market, you know the crazy UFA market, he's probably going to get eight to nine million dollars a year. And Colorado is starting to be a team where cap is an issue now. They've got a beautiful contract for McKinnon there at 6-3, but he's going to have to get money. He's going to get paid, yo, in another two years. After next year, McKinnon's going to get paid. Paid, paid, paid. So you got Kadri to sign. Nachuska needs a deal this year. Um, Josh Manson, if you want to keep him. And how much room do they got? $27 million, it says here. Kemper, you got to sign. Murray's probably done. Lekkonen, if you want to keep them. I mean, they got to fill out roster spots. Burakovsky, they got to sign. $27 million sounds like a lot. But as soon as you give Nazem Kadri his $9 million for a long time, and then after next year, you're looking at at least 12 million, at least 12, 12 and a half million for McKinnon, I would imagine. I, I, I Maybe he gives you a sweetheart deal. But those are a lot of dollars to add to your cap space. So I don't think Colorado is the most likely spot, but at 6 million for the next couple of years, they could give Kadri two Winnipeg Winnipeg could work out a deal with them nine million for a couple of years or whatever the case may be they get a player back in return now it's not huge value because again just like we were talking about with Trocek they could sign him in the offseason or as a free agent if he wants to go there anyways and it's not very likely they're going to give Nazi and Kadri eight years at 31 years old. So basically, it would just be a case of working out a deal. So there would have to be more to this deal than just this. But they're getting Shifley, who's over a point a game center, huge, big boy, great two-way player at $6 million a year for a pretty darn good number less than what Kadri's probably going to get on his deal if he goes out in the free agent market. If I'm Winnipeg for the rest of this now, I'm looking at Val I want Nichushkin. I want Nichushkin and maybe Bowen Byram in the deal. Bowen Byram, I'll take my chance on his injury issues that he'll be okay. Uh, if we look at Colorado, I love Bowen Byram and I know they do too. Okay, you're kind of getting Kadri. Uh, you're getting, they, uh, they want to get big in Winnipeg. So you're getting Nichushkin, who knew Hook can go up here. Shifley can stay in the middle. It'll give you room to sign a Turi Lekkonen as a free agent, which I don't see why you wouldn't want to do. Possibly even sign now Berikoski back again. Where if you had Kadri, one of those are probably going to have to go next year. You won't be able to sign Kadri or Burakovsky. You probably won't. Or Lekin in one of the two. But if you keep them, then you might even be able to keep Josh Manson. Now, you might even be able to keep Josh Manson. $3 million in a cap world is a lot of freaking money, my friends. A lot of money. Now, if they can work out a sweetheart deal with Kadri for, for like seven and a half or nothing, then who knows with Sackick? I mean, he gets people to sign sweetheart deals all the time. But 
I'm just going by what the market would say that it's going to go, and it's all going to be depend on, on if Kadri wants to sign a sweetheart deal or not. But I want Nuchuskin. I'll take my chances with uh, Bowen Byram's injury issues. And let's face it, you got Samuel Gerrard already that can play the left or right-hand side there. Uh, by the way, you'll, you'll have Landis Gog as well on the left side. So if you sign Manson, who shouldn't cost you too much at 30 years old, I don't know. I don't know what he's going to get. you still got a stacked defense with Gerrard coming in there. And you still got a wonderful player in your prospect pool in Sean Barons, who's been ripping it up and probably will be ready to go in a year or two. And you get Shifley, man. Shifley. Between Lekkonen and Chuskin? Come on, buddy. I'm all over that. That is freaking amazing. And you get to keep everybody else. Where if they keep Caudry, and if he's asking for the $9 million, you're probably going to have to let some people go. I don't think this is a completely for sure in Colorado. It's not my new, that's why it wasn't my number one pick. But I think if they're having problems signing Kadri, if he's asking for too much, it could happen. It could happen. Sub yourself up, Colorado fans. Tell me what you think about that deal. Next, the New York Rangers. All the people on my live stream, and that's why another reason, if you're a New York fan, if you're a fan at all, sub up, get on my live stream. I want to hear from you. A lot of Rangers fans, as soon as Shifley came on the board, as a possibility, they were all like, yes, we want Shifley. But here's the thing. Okay, so I thought I would do this just for the for poops and giggles. They already got Andrew Kopp. They already got Winnipeg and New York Rangers have did a lot of dealing together. So Shifley might be happy to go there to be with his old buds. And if somebody's going to get traded back for Winnipeg, they have a difficult time getting guys. And they've got like Pionk over there now uh, that already played for Winnipeg. So, you know, they got a couple guys over there already from the Rangers. So it's kind of like that family thing going on. And they don't really need a center in return. They traded Andrew Kopp already in, at the deadline. Now you're going to get Shifley, too. So you'd have Truba, Shifley, Cop, all from, Win from originally from Winnipeg. But what are you going to give in return? And that's the thing here. Um, not to mention, the New York Rangers have a cap issue. They have a cap issue, don't you know? So they're going to have to send some players back in return. Andrew Cop can go to the left side. He's a left winger. But the problem with that, or you can play the middle here. I think one of the things, and I just did a laugh when you were traded, I never even thought about Winnipeg here in the deal. But if they're really considering the possibility that Lafreniere is buried with Artem Panarin and Chris Kreider and it's affecting his development, which I think it could be, straight across Lafreniere. However, the problem with that, of course, is going to be that they're going to be capped out. So it would have to be more than Lafreniere. And I think that's not really, that's a, that's a lot. If you got to give up more than Lafreniere in that deal, then it's going to have to be a filler name just to keep the cap working. Like Joe Nemeth, Patrick Nemeth. And it's going to even take more than that. maybe Reeves or something like that. Like, really, it's going to have to take something just to make the cap work. That isn't really what Winnipeg wants, but you're getting Alex Laffer there to play with Wheeler on the, up the middle. And I love Alex Laffer here. I still think he's going to be amazing, but I think it's very well possible that he is kind of buried there. He can play right wing, but he's not really the greatest on the right side. Neither is Artem Panarin. He can do it too, but he's not the best at it. Chris Kreider never worked out on the right-hand side. So it's possible that Lafreniere could be buried here and you just do something like that. 
If not, it's going to look, I believe, something like Heidel, K. Andre Miller, and a first round pick. Heidel, K. Andre Miller, and a first round pick, or possibly another prospect from the New York Rangers. Now you're going to say, well, every time I do these things, people are like, that's too much. I'm not going to give up that much, whatever. You're getting a $6 million over a point a game center that's six foot three and over 200 pounds. You, my friends, are going to be paying through the nose for that. It's going to cost you something. It's not going to cost you Lundquist, I Heedle, did I say Heidel again? I apologize. Heedle, I don't know why I can't say Heedle. Heedle, 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 Heedle. I always say Heidel. Heedle, it's not going to cost Lundquist, Heedle, and some other random player prospect that you don't really think you don't need. It's going to hurt. It's going to cost a cackle at least. It's going to cost a Heedle. It's going to cost a K. Andre Miller, something of that nature. It's going to cost a healthy package of players, okay? I would say Heedle, K. Andre Miller, and I'm trying, oh, and uh, your Russian prospect. That's the one I'm trying to remember. The Russian pros, uh, Vitaly Kratsov, that doesn't want to play there. Heedle, Keandre Miller, and Vitaly Kratsov. What do you think about that, New York Rangers fan? Sub yourself up. I do this all the time. Do you love yourself some Shifley that much? All right, next, Boston Bruins. And I have them uh, as my the second most likely, not because... The because they're going to be so desperately wanting a guy like Shifley, they will love, love, love Shifley. I doubt he'd be on their 10 team no trade list. He's from Toronto and it's not far away. He's from Ontario and it's not far away. Same as New York, really, but this is even closer. And I know they'll just give up everything for him. A guy like Shifley, Boston. A big center that plays two ways. Like, this is everything they love in a player, Shifley. Everything. And they're looking to win right now in Boston. By the way, if you're a Boston fan, sub yourself up. I do this stuff all the time. We do trade talk like this. or And I'm going to be doing playoff uh, predictions and all that stuff like that. You're going to be want to be part of it. Plus, you can be part of my live broadcast. I do a live broadcast, totally interactive, where we can talk and all that stuff like that. Anyways, how would you like some Shifley? Yes, DeBrusque is probably going to be part of that deal. He is from Alberta, so maybe he might not mind going to a place like Winnipeg. He's from Edmonton. His father's closer to his father there in Edmonton. So we put him part of that deal. Now, the problem here is, what else are you going to give? Honestly, the more I, as I looked at this, there's not much of a prospect pool for, for Boston, really. What, Oscar Steen, you could throw him in a little bit there. But the more I look at it, the more I think you can't get away with this deal without including Brandon Carlo. Eric Hall is not going to move the meter. And Winnipeg has their own cap issues. It's part of the reason why they're turning, moving Shifley. So if they took Halla and Jake DeBrusque, they're basically putting themselves in the same position that they already were in. Possibly that could be the case with Brandon Carlo too. So Jake DeBrusque, Whatever first round pick you have, which I think is 2023, 
and every prospect you have in the land. Yes, pristine. Uh, you know, John Beecher. Just throw everything at it, man. Mason Loray. Just throw every prospect you have. Does, does tomorrow really matter when you're getting a guy like Shifley? They already threw everything at... Uh, they already threw all, everything in the kitchen sink at Hampus Lindholm, so they have a great top four. I thought Brandon Carlo was going to be in it, but the more I look at it, Boston's not giving up Brandon Carlo. They'll give up DeBrusque. They may give up Eric Halla, but they could retrade him to someone else to get a pick out of it. And then pretty much everything they have in their, their depth chart in the center centerman. Just to go for it. What do you think, Boston fans? Throw everything. Throw everything out the window for tomorrow to try to get one more cup. That's pretty much what you'd be doing here. All right. Next, Nashville Predators. I like this deal for Nashville for a main reason is Michael Granlin could be part of this deal at $5 million going back. Winnipeg really prefers. I think would prefer to not take any money back in this deal. They have other players to sign, but if they got a Mikkel, Mikkel, Mikkel Granlin, they may change their mind on that a little bit. I just, I don't know. They love their Finnish guys. He's a heart and soul kind of guy. He just feels like a guy that they would like a lot. Now, it wouldn't be just that. You'd have to give up more than that. I think possibly a Dante Fabro going back. Um, other than that, just prospects like crazy and a first round pick. Fetter Svechnik, Svechkov and a first round pick. Something like that. Granlin, maybe Svechkov, Alexander Campbell, you might be able to get away with and a first round pick. But if you look at the other packages that we see here, I'm not sure that's going to make it either. But they certainly would love a Shifley in Nashville. I know for sure Poyle would be all over him if he's available. He would try to do whatever he could do to get him. Next, the Calgary Flames. And this one is, I think, the team that is most going to be after Shifley here. Problem, of course, is it's in the same division. That's the big problem with this deal. Because it's in the same division, Calgary would have to give up a crap load in return and take nothing back. I mean, give nothing back as far as, like, say, a Michael Backlund in the deal. Winnipeg would be getting prospects and... Maybe one winger like Alex Dubé or D uh, Dylan Dubé. Either that or Mangiopani. I think they would do Mangiopani. He's got to be re-signed. Would, they would do Mangiopani plus a second or a first or something like that. I think they would just love, 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 love that. And you get Shifley to play with Dylan Dubé would be up there and Tyler Toffoli. But it would Mangiopani and, okay, let's go Balamaki. You're not using him anyways. You so Balamaki, Mangiopani, and a second-round pick. Something like that. Would you do that? Would you do that for Mr. Shifley? Because then Winnipeg would be able to sign some of their own players that they have. Uh, rather than having to go get go out and get someone else, they got a little more cap space. I believe Calgary should be able to afford that. Yes, they got a lot of. They're going to have to sign Johnny and Matthew Chuck here, which is going to cost them twenty million, and I do believe they have twenty seven million in cap space. So getting him would that would be it. Getting Shifley would be it for you which would make it tough to fill out the rest of the roster. But you got Shifley. You can trade some other players away, work out whatever you got, whatever they have to work out for that. 
Uh, maybe trade, it's time to trade Michael Backlund if you can find a taker for him at 33 years old at $5 million. Maybe. Then you got some space to sign these guys at a million dollars. You know, Carpenter, Yarncrock, Satteroff and Gerbranson. I don't know what they're going to get this next time. Maybe one of those guys got to fall off and you got to fill it in with Mackey. Uh, you've been waiting on him for a while. Anyways, I could see that and, uh, you know, fill out the roster that way. But getting Shifley for that second line center spot would be spectacular. Calgary fans, what would you think of that? I think this could be a little difficult of a deal. I thought Calgary was going to be the number one spot, but the more I think about it, I'm not sure Winnipeg's going to want to give it up to Calgary. I think even with what I just offered, it's probably going to take a little more than that. They're probably going to, you're probably going to have to throw a fir, be your other first in 2023 in that deal as well. And I say that because it's within division. They would, pro they would take less from somebody outside of the division, I would imagine, than giving Calgary a chance to get that much stronger. Anyways, that's my full 42, boys and girls. That's all I got to give to you today. Thanks for listening to this fine programming. And uh, tell me what you think about all these trades, Shifley moving and all that sort of thing like that. Sub yourself up and I'll be back with fine, more trade frolic later on. I can assure you of that. Okay, bye.